EBNet conference is focused on technology and bringing the latest uh, things happening in the retirement industry to our audience. But also part of that is adding a couple of bonus tracks. Uh, and one of them is talking about some of the recent developments that happened, for example, the protests and riots in France with regards to the retirement ages. And there's also other issues in terms of world demographics changing in terms of fertility rates and, and, and challenges that that brings about. So I'm joined today by Mr. Dirk Wissaisen, who's Head of Research at Semeca Consultants and Actuaries, to talk us through some of these things, both from a global perspective, as well as how they impact on the local environment. Dirk, good morning. Hello, Chris. Good. So, Dirk, give us some perspective. I mean, you know, give us some context. On yeah, it was with uh, some interest that I followed the protests in France earlier in this year. Uh, what the government was doing is they were trying to move the normal retirement age from 62 to 64. And this uh, unwound in some nationwide protests. And, and that situation is rather different from what we're experiencing in South Africa because we've had quite a number of uh, requests on how organizations can act uh, actually increase their normal retirement age or let some of their staff at least work a little bit longer. And there's actually expectation from staff in South Africa uh, to try and enhance their retirement benefits by working a little bit longer. Sure. It's one of the levers that you have to pull, or that you have, that you can pull to enhance your retirement benefits. But uh, in France, these protests went under the interesting slogan of le droit à la paresse, which means the right to laziness. And uh, uh, all of uh, that really has to do with a fundamental system uh, that they work uh, with in retirement in, in France. So uh, in some respects, they're quite interesting cor uh, correspondence with what we have in South Africa. So there's also a basic state uh, old age grant, which is there for those in real need. And then there's an additional system that started just after the Second World War. And that context is important. Uh, because uh, what happens there is the people in work uh, support the people in retirement. And that retirement age uh, had, had to move from 62 to 64 because the support of those in work uh, was too little to support the number of people that are in retirement. There's a number of issues uh, underlying. The one is obviously longevity that has been improving, with improving health, uh, improving uh, life circumstances and standards. Uh, and, um, and longevity improving uh, those pensions having to be paid for longer. Uh, but the other interesting thing is that the demographics are changing in that the number of younger people joining the system and it's actually right through the northern hemisphere you if you go from the southern parts of europe through to uh, the southern parts of asia uh, south korea china Jap japan um, uh, spain france uh, fertility rates and fertility rates being the number of children that uh, a woman will have have been drastically fallen so we've known of the one child policy that china had uh, but um, in actual fact what has happened is that the more and more women as they joined the workforce and improved living standards they've elected not to have children uh, and the average number of children in some parts of southern Europe have uh, fallen to 1.26 1, 1 um, per, uh, per woman over a lifetime. So that means that the population is aging and there's a, quite a number of plans that will have to be made with these state orientated pension schemes. Now, we're trying similar kind of things in South Africa with state support. Um, there's a big talk about the basic state income grant, uh, national health insurance, and that is founded on the principles of community-based insurance. But if the demographics change, then these uh, insurance systems may very well falter. Now, in South Africa, the fertility rates have been falling, especially as urbanization has taken place. And in the rural areas, we still have 
uh, higher fertility rates, but they, they're definitely falling quite fast. And in some places, uh, we've also fallen below the replacement rate of 2.1. Right. Uh, so, um, uh, we, uh, the message is really when we uh, use these community-based insurance systems or nationwide insurance systems, uh, the design thereof needs to be quite prudent uh, because there's quite a bit of political capital that was expended in France by moving the normal retirement age from 62 to 64. In, in South Africa, uh, we've got an example where we had a differentiated uh, uh, state retirement age between men and, and women. Um, uh, in the early days of the, the old age grant has been going from the 1920s. Uh, it's been expanded in quite, quite a bit over time, but it was 65 for men, 64 uh, women, and it was a lot easier to move men to 60 and equalize and avoid discrimination based on gender or age or uh, what uh, uh, whatever legal recourse uh, they would have had before it was challenged. So to move a defined benefit essentially uh, and to um, lessen the load on the taxpaying population uh, is a lot more difficult um, and we we have to be very prudent in the way that we design these systems. Uh, similar with national health insurance, uh, shifting more onto uh, a small tax base, um, uh, well, uh, it's going to make a pro uh, it's going to design a problem for the next generation. And uh, we just need to be prudent in the way that we design uh, these systems. Interesting stuff. It's almost sometimes mm. politicians don't speak to the economists um, and sometimes vice versa, I suppose, when they make these uh, these big decisions, because, you know, case in point would be China, where, you know, I think they're in a crisis would probably be one of the best ways to describe it, because, you know, because there's very little in terms of the younger generation, which means there's no future consumers, which means, you know, and, and there's no future workers to produce the goods for those consumers. So I think they're in somewhat of a of an interesting little dilemma, but uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, interesting the, these, uh, uh, the world is changing uh, and it's changing slowly. And then suddenly when you realize it happened quick, yeah. uh, but the, um, uh, the Chinese problem is interesting uh, because that social engineering mm. uh, it had to happen, yeah. uh, but to reverse it is going to be equally challenging. That's the trick. So uh, we just have to be careful in what we load on our children. Fair enough. Interesting time. Mm. Doug, thank you very much. That was a very inter interesting perspective. So uh, look forward to having a future chat with you guys again uh, in this forum. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Keep well. All the best.